Okie dokie. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do uh, AP Physics B mechanics problem from 2003, the first one. So I encourage you to try this problem yourself and then check back in on the video. You'll learn way more this way. Okay. After you've tried it yourself, we can go ahead and go through it and grade it together. Okay. So we have a box sliding across a rough surface. I'll draw and make it a little rough. That's fun. And it's position, position x varies with time according to this equation. x is in meters and t is in seconds. Okay, for A, we want to find the speed of the box at time t equals zero. Oh, so fun. So if I want to find speed and I know position, I am going to have to take that good old derivative. So velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time. So let's go ahead and take that derivative. So I always like to write it all out. Um, AP exam loves you writing out things, and it helps you avoid silly mistakes. Okay, so to take the derivative, I'm just going to use the power rule. So this is what, 0 0.5 times 3. This will be t to the 3 minus 1 t squared plus, this is just 2, so that's just going to be 1.5 t squared plus 2. And we want the speed at t equals 0, so let's go ahead and plug that in. The velocity of 0 into that equation is just 1.5 times 0 squared plus 2. We're just left with 2 meters per second. Okay, so for the AP rubric, we'll get one point for correctly using um, or saying that we're, we need to take the derivative of, of position with respect to spec, yeah, I can't talk, with respect to time, so one point for that, um, one point for correctly taking the derivative, and then one point for your answer. Okie dokie, let's go on to the next one. So we want all the following as functions of time t. So that just means t is allowed to be in our answer. Cool, so we'll keep that in mind. So we want kinetic energy of the box. So let's go ahead, always first, just write out your good old kinetic energy equation. That's just one half mv squared. Let's see what we can plug in. The mass is 100. Velocity is, we found it previously. And again, that is just our general velocity equation. Don't forget, it is squared. So easy to forget that squared. Um, it doesn't say to simplify totally, but let's just do a tiny bit. One half times 100, that's just 50. So that's just 1.5 t squared plus 2 squared. And again, don't simplify. Unless it says to simplify, I'm not going to distribute that squared. That sounds a little bit tedious. And this part of the problem, i, is only worth one point. So if you substitute in the correct mass and correct velocity, that is just one point total. Okay, let's look at the next part. So now we want to find the net force acting on the box. So I know F net is equal to ma. It's always good to write that down. Okay, so mass is 100, so I can plug that in. A. It doesn't explicitly give us A, so let's see if we can find A. So I know velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time. The acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So that's dv dt. And our equation for b is 1.5 t squared plus 2. So let's see, that's going to be 3t. Awesome. So I can now just plug that in to this equation right here. So my net force is essentially just going to be 300t. Uh, so you will get one point for indicating that ex acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So write that out either in words or in equation. You'll get one point for finding the correct acceleration and then one point for your final answer. Awesome. Let's go ahead and look at part three. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this. So now we need to find the power delivered to the box. So I know power equals work over time, um, but in general, or you could say power is dw dt. I don't necessarily know work in this case, and I'm going to have to use the derivative version essentially because things are changing, so I'm not even going to bother about that equation. Let's use our other power equation, force times velocity. This is great when you're dealing with like instantaneous things that are changing. So let's go ahead and plug in what we know. Force is 300t. Velocity, we found an expression for that. That is 1.5 t squared plus 2. Cool, we got our answer. And for this, you get one point for writing down power equals to force times velocity, and then one point total for substituting in the correct force and the correct velocity. Okay, on to the next. Okay, so we need the network on the box in the time interval t equals zero to t equals two seconds. Okay, so oftentimes when we deal with work and we deal with this force function is not constant, people will want to use, actually you'll need to use, something involving like an integral or instantaneous. So we'll use f of x dx. However, if we were to look at this, we would have to integrate time with respect to position. So that is going to be, because position and time like relate to each other, that's going to be a little bit tricky. We're going to have to solve for a time and 
plug in a position or vice versa. That is going to be pretty darn tricky. This other equation for work, work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Again, things don't have to be constant to use this equation, but it makes our life so much easier. And we can kind of plug in things. Okay, so let's look at it. So we need essentially the velocity at two seconds. So that's our final velocity. And we're going to need our velocity at zero seconds. So let's see. Velocity at two seconds. Let's see if we can find that. So again, let's go ahead and go up to our velocity function. So let's see, our velocity function is 1.5 t squared plus 2. Let's plug in 2 to that. So this is 2 squared plus 2. And I got that to be 8, I believe. Yep. So that's 8 meters per second. Velocity at 0, we already planned that in part A. That is just 2 meters per second. Cool. So let's go ahead and go back. Let's plug all this good stuff in. So we have, let's see, one half the mass is 100. Final velocity is 8. Don't forget to square it. Take away one half. 100 times initial velocity is 2. Perfect. And I got, when I plug that all in, I got 3,000 joules. Cool. Let's go ahead and check, check out the rubric for that one. So you get two points for using this equation. Work equals change in K. Even if you didn't know what to plug in, but you wrote that equation down, you got two points. Wow, that's fun. Um, you got one point for correctly calculating the velocity at two seconds of eight meters per second. And you get one point for a correct answer with units. Okay. So let's go ahead and go into our last part. So we need to now figure out the work done on the box by the student in the interval, blah, 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 would be greater than, less than, or equal to your answer in part C. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw this out. So we'll have, I'll call it the work done by the student. This for part C, we found the network, which the network is going to be going to the right, because that's the direction the box is moving and accelerating. So let's see. It was a rough surface, so we know friction is going to do some work. So friction is doing some work. So I'm going to go ahead and put work due to friction on the other side. So we essentially know that the network is going to be equal to the work done by the student take away the work done by friction. So this means that the student is going to have to apply more force or do more work than the network just because friction is taking away energy. So the work done on the box by the student is definitely greater than whatever our answer is to C. So this part of the problem is only worth two points. Um, one point for correctly saying greater than and one point for an explanation. Um, and I encourage you to write out what I said or, you know, whatever great ideas you have. Um, yeah, a picture is nice too, but I think they want words as well. Awesome. Thanks so much for watching.